Okay, now I'm being a little bit mean to you because this actually comes from an exam and um, the exam comes with a clue, right? It actually, this, it actually has four parts and um, I've taken up the first part which is the clue because it kind of, I don't know, it, when, as soon as you see a clue, it's like when you get to the end of a, a um, you know, like a detective novel or a mystery, you're like, oh, what's obvious? Like you read that and you're like, oh, the rest of it is obvious. So I want you first to just, and I will, I will show you what the, the technique is, what the property is we're going to take advantage of. I just want you to push on this for a moment, just as mathematicians, right? Just look at the first part of the proof upon which the rest hangs. These two things apparently are equal. Well, they are, okay? But the question is, why on earth would they be equal? What on earth do these have to do with each other? Because it looks to, at, on first glance, that they should be different. It looks like they should be different. So right? For instance, if I gave you any other integral and just said, okay, I'm going to swap out this x, right? That's the only difference here with a pi minus x. You would expect that those two functions are kind of different, right? So how can it be that these are the same? Here's the property that um, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to call it, I've got some names that are sort of overlapping here, but I hope it makes sense. We had the reverse property, which is doing an integral backwards order. Okay? We also had the symmetry properties, which are about odd and even functions. Okay? This is about neither of those, but it's quite closely related to them. So I'm calling this one the reflective property. Again, this is an informal name. But hopefully, once you see it, you're like, oh, okay, this name, this name makes sense. Okay. If you are integrating, again, any function you like, doesn't have to have any special symmetry or anything like that. Um, if you're integrating from naught to eight, if you so choose, if it ends up being useful to you, as in this case, it's extraordinarily useful. You can integrate it on the same interval, but you can reflect it about a certain axis. Now, it doesn't look obvious at the moment that that's exactly what we're doing, but let's draw a picture for ourselves, okay? Um, last time, last time we did an exponential function, right? Let's borrow him again. Hey, yes, that's fine. Actually, I'm going to keep the same color. Okay. So if I integrate, I don't know why I drew the negative side there. If I integrate this um, exponential function from naught to a, let's just call that and that naught to a. So there's a reflection happening. I am contending that that area, that definite integral, is equivalent to this one, whatever it is. Okay. Now at this point, it will be helpful for us to actually put some algebra here, right? What difference is there between these two things? Well, suppose, just suppose, this was um, y equals two to the x. Okay. And then so we'll now I want to ask the question, what happens if I have not 2 to the x, but 2 to the a minus x? What difference is there to this shape? Mm. Now, to help us make sure we, we're doing this right, okay, I'm actually going to rewrite this, because two, two transformations are happening, right? Firstly, there's a reflection, and secondly, there is a translation, a shift, okay? So to make it a little clearer what on earth is going on, I'm going to make x the subject inside there, right? So firstly, there's a negative applied to the whole thing. And once you see there's a negative, this is actually not a plus a, is it? This is actually a minus a. Do you see that? Okay. So I've been reflected vertically or horizontally? Horizontally, okay? Because it's, it's only adjusting the x, right? To, to the power of, right? And in addition to that, I have a shift of a units to the right. Yeah, like there's x minus a, and then there's x minus, sorry, there's x squared, and there's x minus a squared, which is that way. Okay. So therefore, the shift is going to look like this. Well, here's, here's what the horizontal thing would look like. There's the flip, right? And then I have to go a units to the right. Okay. So therefore, I'm getting this kind of shape. Do you see that? So I've moved up. Okay. Now, do you see what's happened now when I go on the same interval, interval from naught to a? to a? What does it look like? Do you see? Have I, have I done it reasonably enough that this boundary and this boundary match? You see why I named it what I named it, right? So there's a reflection happening. So visually, that's the way it works. Can we do the algebra? Last time I showed you a substitution that would get us from 
the left hand side to the right hand side. Do you think you could try it again? Can you get a head start on me? I my proof took one, two, three, four, five lines. Five lines. Can you have a shot at it? And then we'll have a go at using it on this question. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Now, we went from left to right before, I'm gonna go from right to left this time. And you can see a lot of these properties of definite integrals come with an appropriate, they come from an appropriate substitution. Just like they did with, um, what do we call it? The round off property, right? So what substitution do I want here? You can see I have this a minus x, and I don't want an a minus x, I want an x, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce, well, I'm going to do this a minus f. Let's call my chosen substitution a minus x. That'll get rid of it in one here. Okay. Um, if I do that, then two things follow. This will change the integrand for me, but I also have to change the, the variable integration and the boundaries. Okay, so let's do both of those. Um, variable integration, so du on dx is going to be minus 1. Okay. So I'm going to pop the negative on the other side because there's a 1 in my integral, as there always is. So that'll change my variable. I'm going to change my boundaries too, yeah? So I'm going to go, um, by the way, I actually did it in the reverse order last time. I often like to put my boundaries actually in the positions that they're supposed to be, so x equals 0 to x equals a, just so that when I have to put it in, I just don't get confused about the order, right? So x equals a, x equals 0, what am I going to get for each one? What's my u value here? It's zero, and my u boundary here. Hey, okay, so my boundaries are flipped around, which is kind of exactly what I want. So I'm ready to integrate now. When I put this into place, I first change just in the order of my writing. I change my boundaries. So this becomes u equals a, and this becomes u equals zero. Yep. What am I going to get in here? F of? F of? U. There's a dx that was already there, and then here is my change of variable. Cancel, cancel. Happy? Okay, I'm, I'm pretty much there, aren't I? Pretty much there. Um, I've got all of the pieces that I want. This is going to become f of x dx in a second by relabeling, not by substitution, but by changing the variable. Um, this negative out the front from a to naught of f of x dx is just going to take advantage of the reverse property, right? This is going in the, the order that I don't want. So I'm going to use that negative. And there is the left-hand side. Nice and simple. Okay. Question. Can you just say that f of x equals f of x? Can you say that d minus du, how can you say d equals dx, sorry? Because do you have time to find negative? Okay, so. Let's see, I, I've done a couple of things here. Maybe I shouldn't have done that so quickly. So I've done two things in this line. Number one, I've just taken that negative, which is a constant, the negative one. I've, I've factored it out the front. Yep, yeah. that's all I've done. And then I notice that what I have left is the integral of f of u du yeah. after I've taken that negative sign out. But u is just a dummy variable. It's just a temporary label. It's going to get replaced by these numbers in a second. Right? Oh. So therefore, f of u du is the same r as f of x dx. Okay, so I'm not using this as a substitution. There's no a's at all here, right? What I'm doing is I'm just relabeling the variable because it's just a dummy. It's just sitting there for a second until I integrate. But doesn't u equal a minus? It does, but I'm not taking. I'm not. I'm forgetting about that. Like I could have relabeled this line. Could have said f of theta d theta or f of t d t. Right? I'm using the dummy variable property, not this substitution I introduced before. Because if I did that. I'm just going to send myself back to where I started, but I don't want to do that. So I want to go somewhere else. Make it X. Yeah. It's a yeah, it's oh. just a label. Okay. I could have, I could have had this line could have been negative a from zero of f of Nikita to <laughs> d <of> Nikita. <laughs> Oh, I think it's changing with respect to the change in the... Anyway, okay, so I won't, I won't push on this too long, okay? It's just a label. It's just a label. 